All right. So I have that gray layer background and the white bread background to show me what I still have to fill in. And I use that gray so that you're reminded you have to fill in things even if they're going to be filled in with bright white. You have to cut the glass, put the shape in. So what am I missing? I am missing the leg and I'm missing parts of the helmet, but I've got everything else. So I just need to pick some flat colors. I'm going to do these darks first. Hold down shift, get all of those. Group that in with it. Pick a color, hold down option. Let's do, let's see. I'll steal this dark blue from Captain Crunch. Then I go to flatting, use my paint bucket, and I have to drop it in. And for some reason it didn't capture the color I wanted. So I'm going to hold down option, do it again until it changes it there. I'll make it a little bit darker. Now, when I first started doing it, all I had to do was click once and it filled them all in. That's because they weren't surrounded by other color. But once they're surrounded by other color, you might have to click right within the selections to fill it up. Okay, now the nostril. I want to fill that up with, let's do this dark gray so I can steal colors from myself as well. There's a lot of advantages to using limited colors, especially in terms of printing. Oh, what's going on there? Yep, that's what I want, except I want this color. So hold down Option, steal it. Actually, let's do the purple. That could be fun. And in PhotoP, I've noticed you have to press Option and then click very emphatically to get it to change the color for you. And you'll see a little color wheel come up when you do it. All right, next. I want a highlight on the helmet. And I'll use a brighter brown. And then I need to select it. There we go. Hold down shift. Let's get all of these. Go ahead and fill that one too. And then dump it in. Come on. There we go. All right. So I have those flats now. Even though they might not be the exact colors I want. But I'm not quite done with flatting. I'm done with the simplest part of it, which is filling in contained shapes. But I've left a few shapes in my line art uncontained, like the tongue here or the open mouth. You see how it's open? So how do I now change that? Well, then I go right to my flatting layer and I use my lasso. And what I do is I draw with the lasso and contain a shape. And what's nice about the line art is I can draw right within the line art. Right? So I don't need to make it particularly clean. I just have to stay behind the line art. And now I'm going to pick a different color. So I'm going to use my lasso or my uh, paint bucket. I'm going to choose the pink and drop that in. And now this is what my flats look like. If I turn off my black line art, every flat is surrounded by white space. If I turn off my white bread, you'll see it with the empty pixel grid. But where I don't have distinctions in the line art between colors, the colors will bleed right into each other. But that's still helpful because I can change those easily just with the, the paint bucket. The other place I have an opening where I might want more color variation is on the plumage here. I have an opening there and there. So what do I do? I use my lasso and I follow inside of the black line art. That's why thicker line art is sometimes easier. And of course, you can always modify selections. The lasso tool becomes an important tool in coloring. So I'm going to add to it by holding down shift. And now I'm going to change that to a slightly different green. Hold down option. There we go. Plug that in. 
Come on. There we have a slightly different green. Now, what if I just want to use my lasso? Well, I won't do it yet, but I can I can make different coloring options. Now, what color just seems a little bit strange? Probably this brown, right? And I, I did that to show you, just to finish off the last ones, I used that same kind of light brown for all the remaining shapes. I'll show you on white. So how can I change that easily? I don't have to go back to the black bread layer and select that shape anymore because in the flatting layer, that's already an isolated shape. So all I need to do is use my paint bucket and just choose a different blue and drop it in. Same thing for the fingers. I can just drop that right in. And then for the eye, let's see, what do I want for the eye? I like the yellow. It looks very, very in keeping with cereal. But this blue eye, maybe I want to change that, but I don't want it to be whoops, the same as yellow. So I might start with this color, but then I might click on that color in my foreground color selector, and I might modify it to be slightly different, right? And then paint with that instead. All right, so now I've got my basic coloring. And whether you consider this flat color or a local flatting color or local color is dependent on how I actually want this to look in the end but it's filled in and that's step one. So how do I save this now? I save it, if I'm gonna put it up to, to Canvas, I first have to save just my line art, right? So I'm gonna save my line art as a PNG, export as a PNG, turn every other layer off, I'm going to move that to my desktop and then I need to rename it because this is just the line art. It's not the full color. And then that's what I need to put along with my sketch into the assignment. So let's do that. There are three things required. Your sketch and then your clean line art. And then the next thing required is some sort of coloring solution. So how can I save that? I just turn on my colors, nothing else. Save that, export it as a PNG. And make sure the name reflects what you're saving. So this isn't full color yet. This is what I'm gonna call flatting color all comes from the same PSD file. All right, next I can turn my inspirations back on. Save it. I can move this one onto my desktop. And remember, it's a PNG so that it's free floating and it will have any background I want it to have. And I'm going to put that into my canvas. Now you have until next Wednesday to submit this project. That's when it's due, April 3rd. And even if your coloring is pretty simple, as long as you have these three components, you've met all the requirements. Sketch, line art, line art with color. But your coloring can be more interesting than just that. And we've, we've got about an hour left of class where I can show you some of these things and help you with what you're doing. So if you have time to work on it on your own, you can do that. So I'm going to call this flatting colors. Okay. So what's the next step after flatting colors? 
Well, then it's actually figuring out what are the colors that are local. So local color means the color that the thing is. And flat color can be the best color option for your finished spot illustration, as long as you choose the right colors. But it's hard to decide on what the right colors are, so sometimes you just use flatting to, to fill it up and then change them later. So my favorite colorist working today is a guy named Dave Stewart. And Dave Stewart works for all kinds of different artists as a colorist, but he's most famous for working with Mike Mignola on the Hellboy series. This is Dave Stewart doing flatting. This is the flatting without the line art. This is the flatting underneath the line art, right? And then this is his final coloring. And all he does is swap out his flatting colors for something more nuanced, which are always going to be kind of chromatic grays. And then he'll do little details of what's called duotone. And that's the next thing we can learn about. Duotone color. Duotone is when you split the local base color, like a skin tone, into lights and darks, like a, that stained glass I passed around. But before I can start doing duotone, I need to choose what my flat colors are going to be, my final flat colors for this guy. I don't know if I like his feet being that orange, though there's something nice about it. I probably don't like his talons being pink. So what I'm going to do, instead of just replacing these colors, I'm going to duplicate my flatting layer, turn off my flatting layer, and lock it, and rename this flat local color. So these are my flat colors that I'm actually choosing. And for this, I'm going to be a little pickier. So I'm going to use my, just stay on my uh, paint bucket, hold down option and select the color and then click on that and modify it. So what color do I really want his beak to be? Maybe a little bit rustier and maybe a little bit just slightly oranger and then drop that in. And then I decide, Command Z, do I like that? Do I not like it? Do I want something in between it? Or you use my history, right? Because this is going to be the average color of that beak. So let's brighten that up a little bit. Let's maybe push it right to there and then use that. And yeah, I'm okay with that. Then I'm going to ask myself, is there anywhere else in the illustration I can use that same color? Because that would save on printing cost. And I think as maybe reflections in the helmet. That color can make sense. Can I use it on the plume? Maybe, but I need the plume to be pretty recognizably green just because of the, the mascot colors. All right, next, this blue. That's a pretty bold blue, and I'm okay with it. This blue, though, not so okay with. So I'm going to hold down Option to get to that color selector, then click on that color and modify it. And I can see them both here. And I just want to get it like a, a variation on it and then fill it in. Still not quite right. So instead, I'm going to hold down option on this color, which I do like, and then do a darker variation of that. That's too dark. So this is why picking colors can be really tough. So here's another way you can go. I can go to some of my inspirations and I can find whole gradients of blue in these inspirations and then try those out. And then I can always modify those as well. But let's go, go ahead and go pretty dark. And then let's modify it. There, I like that. 